I would like to demonstrate how effectively can we measure the uh, capacitor's impedance against the frequency curve. This shows the RF housing module I'm using um, to make the measurement. This RF housing unit is from TechBox and it costs only I think tens or twenty US dollars. And what I did is, since the uh, RF housing unit is quite small, I made a, a small plate uh, which is made of steel but uh, with uh, sufficient width as you can see here. So this serves as a bus bar for the positive um, um, bus bar. Um, in order to isolate from the shielding of the RF uh, housing unit, I put two layers of captain tape underneath to make the insulation. Then I soldered um, the input port and output port on the uh, steel plate. On the negative bus bar, basically what I did is I put a, a equivalent uh, width um, and length of a, a copper tape and I make sure that it has very good contact with the uh, housing itself. So this serves as the uh, negative uh, bus bar. This screw is important because it makes a, a very good electric connection. So by doing this configuration, I limit the parasitic inductance of this connection as much as I can. One thing you should always know is that the multi-layer ceramic capacitor itself has very uh, little uh, ESL, equivalent series inductor. Often, the biggest ESL is not the ESL within the, uh, the capacitor itself, but rather the connection. So when we make uh, a measurement such as this, we, we need to make sure that this, this whole arrangement has the least uh, inductance or say, uh, loop inductance uh, as, as we can. Of course, even this configuration will probably introduce, I would say, one nano Henry inductance in, into, the, into the measurement. So that has to be taken into account, which I will show you later on in the simulation module. But this is pretty much uh, what I did to measure this uh, uh, one microfarad 1810 size um, uh, ceramic capacitor. This is from Worth, and using uh, Red Expert, I already knew, um, you know, the characteristics of this capacitor, so I can have a comparison uh, with my measurement to see if this measurement is good enough. Okay, so now I can just uh, close this uh, housing and then put into the spectrum analyzer for measurement. Okay, <clears throat> now the IF housing unit in which the ceramic capacitor sits inside is now connected between the tracking generator output and the RF input of the uh, spectrum analyzer. Before doing that, we already normalize uh, this cable by normalize uh, in the tracking generator function. So now we set up um, the tracking generator to generate a frequency sweep between 10 kilohertz and 1 gigahertz with a resolution bandwidth of 100 kilohertz. And um, the output of the tracking generator we select is uh, minus 10 dBm. The unit we, we, we put on the uh, 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 vertical axis is uh, volts rather than the traditional dBm or dB microvolts. The reason for that is when we plot the gain plot, um, we can then uh, uh, compare the results of this measurement with the simulation result tracking generator on and as you can see we got a nice uh, a curve here which is the game plot as as I said and um, if I enable marker and we can see that um, the resonant frequency is about 5 megahertz with a amplitude of 23 microvolts measured here now Later on, we're going to compare this result uh, with the simulation result. So one thing I want to point out is the tracking generator output here. I set minus 10 dBm. You can set 0 dBm and minus 20 dBm or whatever the value you want. But uh, you should always work out the math uh, 
so that when in the simulation model you should uh, set the amplitude of the EC source the same as the uh, output voltage level of uh, of the tracking generator. So in this case, it's uh, minus 10 dBm. Um, we measured it uh, using the oscilloscope here, and as you can see, the peak to peak voltage of minus 10 dBm over a 50 ohm load is. Um, roughly 200 millivolts peak to peak um, here you can see i'm i'm setting the channel as 50 ohm okay so now let's compare the results of this game plot um, with the simulation so we have two simulation models here the first one is a very simple uh, electrical uh, model of a ceramic capacitor with parasitic inductance and uh, esr yeah, and um, we've got the data sheet from uh, with uh, Red Expert. So this is the part number. Uh, it's uh, impedance against frequency curve shown here. And then if we run this simulation model, it's a <clears throat> AC sweep analysis. So sweeping frequency between 100 kilohertz, uh, sorry, 100 hertz to one gigahertz. And we got uh, a curve like this. And you can see it's matching with the uh, Red Experts data sheets uh, quite nicely. Um, here, 100 hertz is above 1k, uh, same here. And uh, the resonant frequency of this part is around 6, um, 5, 6 megahertz, which is uh, showing here, 5, 6 megahertz. And it's, it's below 20 milli ohm here. It's below 10 million ohm, a uh, little bit uh, uh, difference. But I would say um, this module is uh, fairly accurate uh, to the um, Red Expert. Now, the second module we have is um, what we measure from the uh, uh, spectrum analyzer. Now, note that this module is slightly more complicated for the fact that the way that spectrum analyzer works is to just sweep uh, 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 signal and then receiving um, the signal from the measuring port and uh, the signal is in dBm terms as we explained before so I need to adjust this uh, value um, of this AC source and then when you measure it instead of plotting the impedance against frequency curve here we have the amplitude against a frequency curve um, of course, we, with a spectral analyzer, you can't really measure the phase shift um, against frequency. But for the majority of power electronics design, um, it's more than enough. So we built uh, this model here. Just very quickly explain what this model is about. So here is a very simple transmission uh, line model. It's a, it's a lossy transmission line. I put some random number just to give a model uh, of transmission line. Here is your receiving part. Uh, you've got 50 ohm as the uh, receiving resistor of your spectrum analyzer. Some very small parasitic capacitance due to that. And then this is the uh, uh, tracking generator output uh, side. So again, you have uh, 50 ohm to match uh, the 50 ohm here. And um, this parasitic inductance, parasitic capacitance, and this is just the uh, the structure as we we introduce you know the RF housing structure will have at least one nano Henry inductance and some small capacitance I would say so I put all these parasitic parameters in and then I'm run running this model okay so now I have this curve and let's compare this curve with what we actually measured from the spectrum analyzer um, that will be in the in this curve showing here so yeah this is what we we just measured from the spectrum analyzer as you can see again the um, uh, resonant frequency is about five to six uh, megahertz so here is one megahertz two three four yeah between five and yeah five megahertz range here yeah five point six megahertz quite accurate um, here shows the amplitude uh, value sort of 23 micro volts as i explained before because here i'm using volts as the unit just to compare with here i have the uh, simulation model here you can see uh, 26 micro volts very very close to this point 
um, let's put in full and yeah at one gigahertz one gigahertz you got some oscillation due to all the parasitic uh, parameters of, of the um, capacitor and the structure which you also observed here and yeah I would say again this model is very very uh, accurate so we got a very good confidence that's the uh, the test setup we use for measuring the uh, uh, par measuring the impedance of a uh, ceramic capacitor is good enough. So now we can explore more tests using the same setup.